Hello, social workers, mental health professionals, and change agents. Welcome to another episode of the Social Work Rants Podcast. I'm your host, Bas Moreno. Saludos a todos. Greetings, everybody. Thank you for tuning in, tapping in wherever you are watching or listening to this podcast. I appreciate all love and support. Gracias a todo por su apoyo. Continue to rock with the podcast, follow the podcast on all social media platforms, follow the podcast on Instagram at the Social Work Rants Podcast. That's all one word. Follow the podcast on Twitter at Social Work Rants and Facebook, aka Meta. Uh, type in the Social Work Rants Podcast, hit the like button. Uh, if you are, are a video person, make sure you hit that red subscribe button on YouTube. Um, you know, followers, uh, uh, subscribers are coming in, uh, averaging like at least one, one or two a week, give or take. So, uh, thank you for rocking and listening and reviewing the, the episodes. So, uh, we are winding down to season six. I got a couple more episodes to at least scheduled episodes to drop. Um, so again, uh, if you missed the episode, uh, definitely uh, watch or listen to the podcast. If you listen to the podcast, it's available on all audio platforms. Uh, rate the podcast on Spotify. Uh, rate the podcast on Apple Podcasts. Um, if there's any other platform that has a rating system, by all means, rate the podcast. Leave comments, leave a review. Uh, again, I appreciate all the love and support. Um, and definitely, I wanted to come on uh, to say thanks. Uh, it is uh, June is here. It is Pride Month. Uh, for those in the LBGTQ plus community, happy Pride Month uh, to you. Um, there is a lot of work that needs to be done um, in this country. You know, laws are literally drafted and passed every day. Uh, Anti-gay uh, um, bills being passed daily. So uh, I'm definitely an ally. I have a lot of patients, clients uh, under the LBGTQ plus, uh, you know, so definitely uh, my heart with you guys. Uh, happy Pride Month. Uh, def- uh, make, make, sh- make sure, uh, you know, you go out to vote. Um, we got a presidential cycle that's, you know, starting. We got um, Ronnie D. Got, 45 trying to be 47 and a couple other candidates and Biden's running again. So it's uh, you know, an interesting time. Uh, definitely vote in your state and local elections. Uh, that's even more important than the general election. So uh, we got a lot of uh, idiots in, in state government uh, making uh, terrible decisions that's, that's affecting uh us all in different ways. So uh, this week's episode uh, is brought to you by uh, Bass City Entertainment. Uh, If you've been listening to the last few episodes, uh, my business is going through a rebuild or rebrand. We'll be now focusing on financial education for people of color. Uh, I am hosting a workshop, uh, kind of give like a basics of like my why, why I'm doing what I'm doing now. Um, kind of just give like my, what I've been learning these last three years, especially since COVID. Um, as many of you know, or have been listening and watching for a while, I know I purchased my home, I, uh, started a business, um, you know, investing in the stock market. I, got my car, my business name, and just kind of like picked up some knowledge and then might, you know, want to give back, especially um, for people of color, uh, particularly uh, Latino, Latinx. You know, we are, are very behind in terms of uh, financial education, uh, just finances, uh, of you know, having 
money saved up for emergency fund, uh, um, you know, a, a rainy day fund, or uh, you know, life happens and you know, we still like behind, and you know, we got to catch up. And there's so much information out there, uh, a lot of good, a lot of bad. Uh, so it's kind of gets like overwhelming, but uh, you know, I wanted to give. My two cents into it. So June sixteenth at uh six thirty. It's Friday, June sixteenth. It's like literally like just over two weeks. I'll be hosting my first uh, webinar. You can go to bassmoreno.com, uh the website. Like I've been f- trying to fix up the website. Um so entrepreneurship is a lot of freaking work. Uh don't let these IG gurus fool you. Um it, it is a uh, a lot of work and myself with a full-time job, two kids, uh, husband, uh, newlywed, about to celebrate my one-year wedding anniversary in a few weeks, and a caretaker to a uh, elderly parent. Um, you know, there's, there's only so much time I could give in terms of my business, so uh it's hard, but we 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 try we trying to make it work. So, uh, definitely my first webinar. See how it goes. Uh, June sixteenth. Uh, again, you go to bassmoreno and register. It's seven dollars a person. So I hope to see you there and kind of give you like my why, as uh, give some backstory uh, of like my, sharing my wins, uh, sharing some knowledge about five twenty nines and four hundred one k plans, uh, and kind of go from there. So. That that is the update regarding the business. Uh, this week's episode. Um, so last week, um, in the I released the episode last week. I went to the National Conference on Social Work and HIV and AIDS uh, in Washington. It was held this year in Washington D.C. Uh, it was a lot of people. Uh, met a lot of fascinating uh, social workers from throughout the country. Um, Michigan was repping heavy, um, also uh, in Dallas too. A lot of uh, Texas, especially uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, was repping real heavy. Um, so my company paid for the registration for me to go, and I, I went. Um, you know, I work as a social worker slash case manager in a hospital setting, um, and the clients I serve everyone has uh, either HIV or AIDS. Um, so I uh, went to the conference and uh, just really purpose, purpose of me going, uh, definitely HIV has been uh, probably like the most passionate, you know, HIV uh, diagnosis those probably like the most passionate uh, group clientele that like I've worked with in social work and kind of like I always like was like one of the there's so many things you could do in social work but with HIV adults kind of like I always wanted like to learn more it's kind of like seemed like was always curious as to like what's out there in terms of medications and I'm sure uh, many of you especially in the states uh seen commercials uh for these medications that are you know, doing wonders, uh, you know, one pill a day, and it could be undetectable and, and, you know, like, no, mean no signs of having the virus in your bloodstream. Um, I wish there would be more, at least where I'm at, uh, about uh, PrEP. Uh, so PrEP is the medication to you know, prevent catching HIV. Um, I wish there was more at least where, where I'm at in the Delaware, uh, Philly area, you know, news-wise, like, you know, bulletins or commercials about uh, PrEP, even though there is an injectable that I see commercials for it, uh, to just get the, the word out more about that. So there was so many different presentations uh, on aging. Uh, there was a huge presentation about aging um uh, so many new diagnosed adults who are 50 55 and older um, so obviously just because you're 50 55 doesn't mean you stop having sex i mean there's 
um, people living healthier now, living longer, um, not necessarily needing like Viagra or Cialis to, you know, you know, have sex or get aroused or anything like that. So um, definitely, you know, the, the, it's up and coming. I And myself, I see a lot of young people in the early 20s newly diagnosed as well. Um, and also uh, newly diagnosed uh, Latino, Latinx, and uh, Haitians uh, community new, being newly diagnosed. Not only, so they're coming into the country uh, in the pandemic, during the pandemic, and then they're finding out that they get, have HIV on top of that. So, so there was a whole training about that. Um, it was a gentleman out in uh, Atlanta, outside Atlanta in Georgia, he was talking about uh, their presentation on, on the Latinx population. And you know, I asked him, like, you know, my struggles is, uh, you know, people, like I just said, people are coming in brand new into the country and now they're finding out, they go get tested, they get sick, and then they go to the doctor and then they get blood drawn and they're finding out that they the HIV positive. So it's kind of like, how do you like navigate um, having those type of conversations? And like my role, what I do is kind of like geared only focus or primary focus is, you know, kind of doing some short-term counseling, but at the same time, I'll focus directly about HIV and not necessarily everything else that falls into like it's all about okay do you have insurance if not you gotta go apply for insurance so it's not a case management type of thing and like so so what i asked the presenter who um who might be coming on in the podcast soon hopefully i'm crossing my fingers that um that plan happens because i really had a fascinating conversation with him um uh, after his presentation um and, and, and so like how do you like you navigate you know persons coming in like literally literally new into the country still trying to navigate you know delaware is not the most easiest state to kind of navigate especially if you don't have a car it is really hard to kind of get around and do basic needs get your basic needs met and you know, seeing the doctor and getting an HIV diagnosis and now you got to start taking medication and not really fully understanding, like, kind of like how you contracted the virus and things of that nature. There's only a few ways you can get HIV. So kind of like trying to explain all that, kind of navigate all that and how do you really do that in a cultural competent way in a social work type of way and kind of like navigate everything in between. So that was a fascinating conversation, fascinating uh, training. Um, I had uh, spoken to another uh, gentleman uh, regarding, regarding uh, like another training regarding uh, uh, black mental health and uh, Black experience and kind of uh, everything that has been happening with uh, ever since 400 year plus history of you know, slavery and leading into you know, the 2020 regarding you know, the murders of Beyonce Taylor and George Floyd and now uh, continue still unarmed killings of African Americans happens on, on a daily basis and not everything is captured on video or on the news. It happens every day. So I kind of have those conversations and how you deal with that on a you know, day-to-day uh, basis. So that, that was an interesting uh, conversation. Um, and, uh, you know, interesting absence of you know, the history of, of certain words, curse words that we use and like the real meanings behind it. And I learned a couple curse words not to use anymore because of uh, you know, words that, that 
and actions that were done against uh, innocent uh, African American boys or uh, uh, children of slaves and and, and things of uh, of that nature was very 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 powerful. So uh, I'm hoping to have that gentleman on the podcast as well. He was definitely interested in coming on. So it's all about email and timing and. and and setting up a date, setting up a time. So uh, that hopefully that that's in the works because it was really a really fascinating uh, conversation. And then uh, definitely been uh, been passionate about uh, housing, uh, housing just in general, but also because I've been learning about real estate, which is how I even uh, got my house in the first place. You know, Delaware was and still is kind of like a, a hot hot market. Um, the country is kind of going, th- and it's funny because I had conversations with with uh, different social workers through you know, people from Indiana, and like I said, Texas, and we were all kind of going through the same struggles with you know, and trying to house clients and finding affordable housing, and there's really kind of like no such thing as affordable housing right now. Uh, rents are, are skyrocketing throughout the country. There's not a lot of housing uh, available, empty apartments. And, and uh, so it's kind of like, you know, I spoke to somebody from South Bend, Indiana, and basically we could have flip-flopped. Like he could have worked here in Delaware. I could have worked at, at South Bend, Indiana. And we both are dealing with the same issues regarding lack of resources in terms of housing. The only good thing that he had going on was, was where he was working at. They had a... a supported housing program for people with HIV in Delaware. They don't have that. Uh, I heard that Delaware used to have a program for it, but um, a social, social, social service agency could really be like kind of killing it in, in the social work, you know, buying up uh, farmland or whatever. Uh, and kind of setting up a, a housing program for, you know, um, for individuals with, with, with HIV AIDS or mental health, uh, those diagnosed with a mental illness and kind of really kind of giving back and providing resources that, that people are needing, people are struggling. So there was a lot of that, um, don't matter what state you're in, we kind of all struggling with the same type of issues. And that was, fascinating to, to see and experience and, and, and talking to different social workers about that. And I'm glad somebody from uh, HUD, uh, HUD is uh, you know, a federal, federal agency that deals with housing and uh, that works under the Biden administration, was at the conference, did a presentation. And Congress is really, according to the presentation, really uh, doing a lot getting a lot of stuff passed. However, we're not kind of the trickle down into the states are not really seeing that. So I uh, brought up the question to the person that did the, the presentation is like, um, I was like, I'm glad to hear con- Congress is doing stuff, but I feel like it should be like broadcasted more. Like this is what, what we have done to like help the people. It kind of, so that now we know it would be like a state issue and kind of deal with our state representatives and kind of like the governor, like it, like I said before, it kind of, it goes back to on the state level. So um, and we know we got idiot governors like tech in Texas, we got Tennessee, we got idiot governor in Georgia, we got an idiot governor in Florida and, and a couple of other states. So, um so it's kind of like all right how can you get the message out like this is what we're doing this is try to provide the funding you know to help these these community agencies kind of thrive and provide resources for people so it's so it, it and the re- kind of kind of was taken aback it was like oh there's something that I guess we kind of like the messaging, you know, I acknowledge that the messaging is could be a, a little off regarding that. So overall, like I had a, you know, just talking to people, 
kind of getting you know, you know learning learning stuff and and uh kind of meet, you know meeting people where where they at in terms of the conference. You no, know, uh, you know, it was great that that the play the conference was was held in D.C. Like it was only like a two hour, two and a half hour drive from where I live at. So, um, unfortunately, next year's conference is going to be in, in Orlando, so uh, I'm I'm not trying to mess with, with with Florida anytime soon if I can help it. And of course, uh, CEUs uh, were were offered. Uh, the the conference ran from uh, late Tuesday night, uh, like Tuesday late Tuesday afternoon. I got there Wednesday uh, for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and uh, I left Friday afternoon. It was a uh, uh, portion of the conference uh, Saturday uh, morning. I left Friday, um, run run home <laughs> to to the family. So uh, overall, it was really a good time. I, I encourage people to go. Um, it was the thirty fifth year that they had the conference, and I've worked in HIV programs before, and for some reason, I never heard of the conference. Um prior to to this year working where I'm at now. So we had like trauma informed, uh, you know, revisiting self-disclosure and social work practice. Um you know, I know the my the Biden administration are really trying to push to try to eradicate you know HIV by uh 20, 20, 25, 20 by 2030. So it's uh, but housing, they announced during the conference or throughout the conference that housing plays a, a is a big barrier. If people don't have housing, then how are you going to store your your medication? If you take one pill a day, where are you going to put your meds? So you know, have them on all the time, or you know, you need four walls to kind of you know reset in in your life and if you don't have a stable place to live you're not going to focus on going to see going to see your doctor go take your meds go get blood blood drawn to see where, where your blood levels are at so um kind of like that was like a, a major theme was was housing um really like different even i saw like a, a presentation about even in Mississippi, you know, Mississippi is known as a poor state, and they they having a uh, transportation uh, kind of company that like a huge bus and providing like you know resources and, and taking clients to appointments because transportation was another theme and something that I struggle constantly of, of having clients uh, who don't have transportation trying to come to the clinic to see the doctor in order to or get their medication and, and uh, really um, not struggles with the transportation so housing transportation were the main issues and again this is this is nation nationwide from talking to different uh, clients out different social workers in, in, in the space so uh, uh, definitely uh, struggles regarding housing, transportation. Um, it was just those were like like I said, the really like the major major themes. Um uh, was talks about um uh, a healthy black masculinity, um uh getting involved in, in HIV, you no know, planning. Was a, there was a lot of policy also policy was, was a, a big thing getting how to get into uh doing some pol policy work um uh, relates to social work is uh, you know and then, and where do where does that start? And a lot of a lot of it falls on you no know, grad schools. Um that grad schools kind of gear us it's a clinical work and a lot of a lot of us don't want to do the clinical work and doing other things so um so it was just definitely like eye-opening you know experience um kind of um uh, really opened my eyes to like you know like I said going back to the, to the housing housing is a major a major piece that 
uh, the government, you know, both city, you know, local, uh, state and federal really need to figure something out regarding you know, the cost of cost of housing is astronomical currently. Um, you know, studio apartments. I see studio apartments. One bedroom is going for like over two thousand dollars, like in New York City, and even the cost of living here in Delaware is going up, especially with the last like three years from when I first moved down here to now, and, and hearing the the rates for for rent for one bedroom, two bedroom is 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 a lot, and unfortunately, people. Uh, are really struggling right now. We, you know, we still uh, in a recession. Uh, you know, the government doesn't want to admit to a recession. Uh, we got inflation going on. Um, so kind of people are, are really struggling. And now all this talk about AI uh, taking jobs away, or so it's 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 a lot going on. It's a lot for us to uh, kind of navigate. Um, in the social work profession, but something that we gotta like be mindful, be thinking about, uh, especially those in private practice. Like uh, several episodes ago, kind of mentioned all of these case management issues that are fastly approaching, and I'm sure clients are going to be like miss possibly missing sessions because now they they start. I either pay for a session, come see you for therapy, or I gotta pay a light bill, or or I, I need to take some of this money so I can help pay for my my rent. So uh, it, it's is stuff to, to think about. Is stuff to and we gotta get ready. We gotta we gotta be be mindful. We gotta be watching at least a little bit what what's happening with our economy and the news and I know news related to what's happening with the economy you know if you watch news watch a whole half hour you could be be depressed there's so much depressing stuff happening all on news on a day-to-day -day basis but and it doesn't have to be just on the news you can just go on like Instagram and or or Twitter and like sort of like breaking news, depressing news be 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 on social media as well. So it's not just television news. Or you just go on an app and and it's like and see something negative happening. So um, all I have to say, like uh, I, again, I recommend everybody going to national, even if you don't work with the population, just to kind of see where thing, things are heading you know, related to social work policy, housing. Um, so if it wasn't in, in Orlando, I would like love to go, go again. So um, met so many amazing social workers uh, throughout the country. Um, that would be from Alaska, um, just, just throughout um, the, the U.S. So met some fellow New Yorkers. Um, so it, it was just uh, a lot a lot happening. Uh, definitely a good time. I did not travel <laughs> through D to DC. Uh, didn't see the monuments or anything like that. I, I, I did that like a few week, few weeks be before like last month I, I I went and saw the monuments and, and I'm going back to DC uh, again later later this month. Uh, so I'll, I'm hoping to go to the uh, African American Museum. So uh, that's the only thing I have not done yet that I really want to do. So um, that's what that's this week's episode. I know it sounds like like rambled, but I wanted honestly I was kind of stuck on top of with a topic. I was like I ain't doing an episode this week, but I wanted to to get some feedback on on this uh, amazing conference. Um, and you know, this is a population that I currently work with that I'm most passionate about in the profession. And I kind of want to go back to when I was in grad school doing my second internship. And uh, my uh, my field advisor, she was like, you need to start thinking about what you're most passionate about in social work and kind of think about you know, 
working with, with whatever you're most passionate about. So, and I already had kind of worked, then I started working with HIV yet during that time or afterwards, maybe like right after grad school, maybe like a year or two now I, I started working with my first organization that worked with uh, HIV diagnosed adults. And I learned so much in that one year that I was there. Um, and I was like, if I ever had a chance to work with that population again, uh, I would in a heartbeat if the money was right. And, and then a few years later, I worked at another organization, uh, same client clientele, uh, HIV AIDS adults, uh, diagnosed adults. And during that time period, you know, you know new medications you know, came out and instead of taking the what we call the cocktail, the 20 pills started becoming like, it was like two two pills a, a day, or at least the very beginnings of the one pill a day uh, for for medication. Uh, and now uh, there's a few pills on the market, that's one pill a day. Um, and they had uh, different uh, uh, sponsors uh, like Gilead and uh, talking about um, the medication, like the the working lunches, like you know, hearing the presentations about the medications, and while having a uh, dope lunch, so uh, and the lunch, uh, can't can't beat a free a free lunch. So I'm just keeping it keeping it real and uh, and just hearing more about you know, medications and, and the studies regarding that. So uh, you see the commercials, you know, Bitarvi is the main one. Uh, it's really been like the most effective. Uh, it's a whole presentation about that. Uh, so uh, definitely, uh, if you know somebody uh, who just recently got diagnosed with the HIV, uh, you know, uh, just to have their their options. There's many different options out there for for medication. Uh, definitely start treatment right away. It's not like before you gotta wait to like your show physical symptoms. You can start medication uh, right away and live a long, healthy life. Um, just taking one one pill once a day, um, and then you could be undetectable within a cu a couple months after started taking medic medication, and nobody needs to know your status. Just go to work and do whatever. Uh, you choose to do so. Uh, a lot has changed in the uh, uh, since since Magic Johnson at first got diagnosed with, with HIV. So, um, and I'm, I'm still learning. Like every day, I'm still learning stuff at at work and hearing client stories of different things that was happening in Delaware and how it relates to to my clients and heard a, a story today uh, uh, that I didn't learn about and in, in what Delaware does. So uh, it's always learning uh, for my new newbies, new social workers, class of 23, uh, congratulations on graduating. So always uh, be willing to learn. Uh, you will learn from your clients. You will learn that depending on the clientele you work with, the clients know each other. So if you're experiencing one thing with one client and then you see a client like a week later, they're kind of going through a similar thing, or you kind of you kind of kind of learn from one client and be able to apply that situation uh, something similar to uh, the client you see a week later or stuff always seems to happen. And like, oh, I did this one. I already had this experience doing this. I could just already have that experience and be like, okay, I know what to do and be able to, to help your clients. Uh, and again, everybody's uh, different. Everybody has a different situation, but um, putting the clientele you work, you you work at, uh, clients talk to each other. They kind of know each other or in neighborhoods or through programs or, or other stuff. So, um, so yeah, so kind of we we all about giving back, but at the same time, we also gotta be in it for the income 
not only just the outcome. So that I would tell all the new newbies, the new social workers that are coming into into the field. And for me, I always been about the income as much as the outcome. So I, that's how I got into kind of got into social work because I I needed <laughs> I needed some money in my pocket. So um that that be a story for another day. Um, but that's it for me, me rambling, um, hope to have a better organized, uh, (laughs) talk. Um, I do have some, some, uh, interviews scheduled, uh, and so be, be ending season six, uh, fairly soon, probably by the end, end of this month. Uh, end of June, it'll probably take like a week off and, and come back in July and and kick off season, season seven. So um, you see my background for those of you on YouTube, uh, Triumph Through Pain, my poetry book, How to Maximize Your Full Potential During Hard Times is still available on my website, bashmoreno.com. It's also available on Amazon. I actually finally recorded the audio book uh, a couple of days ago. So I'm actually going to re-record it. Um, hope to, hopefully I could do that this weekend. Uh, and then y'all register for, the, for, the, for this financial course. If you're interested, uh, definitely join me on the 16th. I hear my why as to why I decided to uh, do that. And kind of like the whole point is having Bass City Entertainment. I might have um, kind of like a name change. Uh, but I will still keep Bass City Entertainment on because um, legally that's the business name. So I'm going to keep that, but doing business as I still got to come up with a name for that. Um, and then kind of do a whole new logo. And then kind of like the actual business form formation on taxes wise and everything that's you know set up correctly is just kind of the building the business from scratch, kind of a remix of it after fact and kind of you know, reached out to social some fellow social workers and they were kind of interested in the topic and reaching out to people and people seem to be interested in learning about finances and learning about uh, what I know and kind of and kind of give back. So that's the whole presentation, partly part of the presentation on the 16th. So definitely to, uh, go to BassMoreto.com as a $7 a person and you want to uh, know about some, fi- some finances, uh, definitely uh uh, tap in because you know, grad school they don't teach you about <laughs> about finances and um and like business formation and all that stuff so uh, for one ks and all this all the good stuff so um and then get the book uh, if you're interested uh also uh, the latinx social work volume two book is available as well um uh, read my chapter in the book uh, the juiciest book of 2022. So um, it's, it's an amazing book. Uh, get that. Um, if you want to come on the podcast, email me, Bass City Entertainment LLC at gmail.com. Uh, love to have you on, set up something um, to get season seven popping. Uh, I'd love to have you on and kind of kick it and talk social work with you. So, Until next time, peace out.